Hey YouTube, happy Monday, happy Indigenous Peoples Day. It's another day, which means it's time for another YouTube video. Today I just want to talk about my new Casio FX9860 G2 2 programmable graphing calculator. If you've looked at my previous videos, you know I'm really excited about programmable calculators as a tool for teaching CS concepts and solving simple and not so simple problems. I did a lot of COVID simulations with these and I'm planning to port a TI-66 COVID simulation program for the TI-95 which shouldn't be so hard. I have you know a lot of TI, a lot of HP graphing calculators but really no Casio ones. I decided not to get some of the older programmable Casio calculators because they're really expensive and kind of weird and arcane and they don't give you assembly language access. But it turns out these uh, FX series programmable graphing calculators like I uh, have here. This is the, as I mentioned, the 9860G2, but honestly the um, 97, 9750 G series and other related ones are really exciting because they are, are, are really exciting and as exciting as this 9860G2. And they're all super exciting, make me super happy, because they're really inexpensive. You can get these for $50 or less, just if you look on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. They're full of these things. I think this thing I got for $20 with shipping. They're, so they're super common, and they're... Uh, heck of a lot faster than your typical TI-83 or TI-84. These are built around a Hitachi uh, Super H3 SH3 or Super H4 CPU. Those are RISC CPUs like an ARM. And these tend to run at 29 megahertz for some of the older versions. This one's newer, so it runs at 58 megahertz. For reference, the TI-84 Plus ran at a blisteringly fast 14 or 15, I think 15 um, megahertz, but anyway, the, the point is, you know, a heck of a lot slower than these Casios, which means you can solve problems better. And in addition to that speed, the 9860G2, I think unlike the earlier 9750 and older, many older programmable Casio calculators, has flash in addition to RAM, and it has dual connectivity, as you can see here. With, let's see if I can zoom in there nicely. With either three pin TTL serial, which is great because you don't have the power loss from converting to RS-232, or by USB. And there turn out to be, there turns out to be a really nice Linux program called Kahoot that will not only transfer files to a 98-9860G2 like we can see here, but also to the 90 750s and even to older Casio graphing calculators with just a 3-pin TTL serial interface. In addition, like the TIs, there are data loggers for this. I think the EA100 and EA200, I plan to get one and connect some of the vernier instruments that I have for my, my TI CBL and see if they work, work just as well, you know, measure relative humidity and temperature and stuff like that. And then the programming is just like TI Basic, but I think like indirect addressing is a little bit easier here. I also saw there's an enhanced Casio Basic language called C.Basic that offers a lot more functionality in terms of graphics, I.O., and even inline machine code, which really shocked me. It's been a little bit hard to find a lot of documentation on this stuff. I think it started to get standardized with stuff like Git only very recently. But a lot of really exciting potential for this uh, instrument. I even hope to connect this to something like an Arduino in the future. Anyway, so I just showed you this This thing has you know, a nice plastic cover with some feet on it. Uh, it says Casio, as uh, I think everyone would have expected. Uh, these feet are great just for keeping it off the ground. The one I got was a bit scratched up, but for 20 bucks with shipping, I'm not complaining. This was just sort of an impulse purchase and Facebook Marketplace. Well, impulse purchase of this, but you know I've wanted uh, Casio programmable graphing calculator for a long time. And sort of found reasons to convince myself not to get this. 
It runs uh, until now. It runs on four AAA batteries and has something like, I think, a hundred or two hundred hours battery life, which is just incredible. And you think with TTL serial or USB, you don't have to change levels up to 12 volts or whatever. So there's there's even less of a hit to to battery life. Again, some nice feet here. I'll close that down. Let's see what we have further up here. We just see it's uh, DC Casio. Seeing if there's anything especially exciting there. It is made in China, four AAA batteries, 0.7 watts. I think I saw this rated at something like 22 milliamps while it's running, which is which is just incredible. What you can do with that. My cat loves it. She's marking me right now. She really wants to be in a YouTube video. Yeah, there. I think she's getting her 15 seconds of fame. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, turn this thing on. So to turn it on, you press AC slash on that you can see there. Let's see if I just tilt that out of the light a little bit or um, zoom in. I'll go ahead and turn this thing on. And you can see just how readable this is in even bright light. I guess, you know, a little bit, well... I take that back. That is kind of reflective, but in the right angle, it looks quite good. It is a 128 by 64 pixel display. Let's see, and it is backlit. Yeah, if I shift or shift light and then turn that off. Let me turn off the lights really quick and see if we can, or turn down the lights, excuse me. See if we can take a look at that. So that shouldn't be so bright now. Um, there we go. You can see it's backlit. That doesn't use too much power, but that's great. You know, a darker room. I'll go ahead and do, yeah, so shift light and then shift light off. Yeah, so separate, sorry, separate keys, shift and light and then shift and light to turn that off. Sorry, I'm just mixing it up with like hold, holding a shift key or something like that. These are just some programs that I've written here. I have an N Queens benchmark that I can execute that should take about a minute or so. This is the newer USB Power Graphic 2 of the 50, of the FX9860 G2. And that just has to do with, with some um, enhancements to the processor and uh, to the uh, flash RAM. Let me really quickly check how much RAM it has for you. This is going to take a little bit to run. Uh, sorry that that's kind of boring. Uh, yep, uh, it's not boring for the cat, of course. And let me just um, to go ahead and check for you how much RAM there is on this. Um, yeah, so this is running the N Queens pro uh, the N Queens program as a benchmark FX. I believe it's one and a half megabytes of RAM uh, total, but I just want to check that for you. Ninety eight sixty G two Planet. Casio. Oh, Shangle. Shangle, you need to get out of view. That's Oh, there we go. 876. Okay. So the benchmark ran. I'll just give you a quick demo of some more um, aspects of the, user, of the UI here. There's the menu function. I think you've all probably seen this if you're, you've seen the advertisements even for um, Casio graphing, FX graphing calculators. You can see there's a program option, there's a um, S-sheet, that spreadsheet, little um, battery level indicator there, run mat just for using this as a standard calculator, graphing option, um, not sure what that is, link, memory, system, let's take a look at system, and the version, I think the newest version of the 
of the OS is um, 2.11. I don't have any add-ins. You can see just my username there. Yeah, so the light right now is a little less intense. Um, exit, exit, menu, memory. Um, actually, this would answer. Um, yeah, it is one and a half. I was right. So the flash memory is one and a half megabytes. I didn't even need to look that up for you. And then main memory should be 56. Yeah, it's uh, sorry, 56, 64K, excuse me, which is again pretty pretty decent. There's a lot of the older functions maintained here in, in addition to the newer ones. And by that I mean there's still IS, ISC and DSC loop control. Let me go, get, go, go back to programs. And we can see in this um, in Queen's benchmark it's setting variables A through Z to 0. Uh, setting R to 8 using that stow. Stow, stow operator function. Setting R to the dimensions of list 1, do ISC X, R to list 1 X, do ISC, C, um, ISC loop S, X to Y. It has while loops, it has four loops, it has it is do while and for, for next both. Really easy to write code with this. It's um, sort of a uh, menu-driven system for picking out functions, which is nice so you don't have to type them all the way. And I think I, I talked about then the aesthetics and philosophy of programming these types of calculators. I'm going to turn the lights up really quick. Uh, but anyway, super, super powerful. I'm really excited to see what I can do with this. Uh, let's see. I can zoom out a little bit and maybe just adjust the... Um, there we go. I think that looks, looks a bit nicer. Yeah, so I can uh, go through... Um, let's see here. Uh, excuse me. Program... Uh, exit. Yeah, I'm trying to remember now. Variables. Exit. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, not my best moment here. Uh, option. I believe that was it. Yes, option. So when I press option here and go through this menu, I get um, uh, different uh, variables and functions that I can uh access oh well maybe it's shift oh that was it sorry shift uh program uh not um option but in program i i can i can get shortcuts to different functions like um comparisons relational comparisons say to do tests uh this is a turing complete computer as you'd expect you have uh Jumps, conditions, indirect addressing, sub and subroutines, as you could find in other programmable calculators. But anyway, I have a lot of exciting plans for this um, programmable graphing calculator. Hopefully I'll get to them all. Let me just go ahead and turn this off and wrap up the video here and talk about some other plans that I have. Yeah, there we go. And we can see that turn off. Anyway, so that's just my quick preview of the Casio FX9860G22. As you can see right there. In future videos, I plan to talk about a TI-95 keystroke compiler I've developed. Sort of as a teaching exercise for myself, but also a tool for other people who use the TI-95 to convert keystroke listings that you type up on the computer into tape files that you can load with the interface that I've developed, I've talked about in a prior video, and I still sell. I'm also thinking about creating some kind of solar charging system for the TI-95 and other calculators. I plan to make a similar tape interface and tape file
conversion program for the Sharp EL5500 III or PC1403 as it's known in the rest of the world. I think that should be a very rewarding project. As far as this uh, Casio, there's um, a number of different games and programs I plan to demo on this. I believe there's a Chip 8 emulator and that's you know another great uh, tutorial for virtual machines. There's, I believe, a, um, a TCP IP stack implemented on this, as well as a simple serial terminal emulator. Another exciting exercise for myself will be implementing a serial terminal emulator for the TI-95. That should be pretty exciting and uh, should be great for using that as a TTL serial terminal for an Arduino to collect things like weather information from a um, little solar powered weather station or something. And then shifting from that into biking videos that I guess have become more more uh, common in my channel now, I figured out that you can use a uh, little ball joint spanner uh, to push ball joints, uh, ball joints out of um, their sockets in um, cars. Anyway, that you can use a ball joint spanner to remove cotter pins in bicycles. I used this at the bike co-op and I heard a cotter pin shoot out like a bullet and uh, go across the room. I'll you know, be a lot more careful next time, but that's really exciting. I hope to make that video. I think that'll help a lot of people who have you know older three-speed bikes. But anyway, with that, thanks. thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe as always. And if you have any thoughts about this Casio uh, graphing calculator, the projects I talked about, or your prior use of these uh, Casio programmable calculators, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching.